much to say about Einstein's theory of relativity. First, you need to understand that it's a bit of a mind-bender. What we learn from relativity is that both space and time are not solid features of our universe. Rather, space and time are pliable. They can be stretched or warped. Another thing you should know off the bat is that Einstein's theory of relativity comes in two flavors. There's the general theory of relativity, and there's also the special theory of relativity, both monumental ideas. But general relativity was certainly Einstein's greater accomplishment. It tells us that gravity isn't actually a force. Rather, mass has the effect of warping space as well as the passage of time. Mass distorts the fabric of space and time, much like a heavy weight set upon a, an elastic sheet. Otherwise straight lines become curved. The more the mass, the greater the curvature. Special relativity focuses only on those special cases where there's no acceleration. You can use special relativity to calculate how time passes differently for two people moving at different speeds. From special relativity, Einstein developed the equation for which he is most famous, which is E equals mc squared. As we discussed earlier, this equation tells us how energy and mass are really two forms of the same thing. At the heart of both general and special relativity is the idea that the speed of light is constant. It doesn't matter what your frame of reference, how fast you're moving, or whether you're accelerating or not, you will always measure the speed of light to be the same. Most all of the mind-bending aspects of relativity arise from this single fact, that the speed of light is constant no matter what. If you want to wrap your head around relativity, it's important to nail down this idea that the speed of light is constant. So let's start with that. Then in subsequent lessons, we'll touch upon the basics of both general and special relativity. Recall from an earlier chapter that light is a form of pure energy. It arises as a charged particle, such as an electron, is caused to vibrate. As the charge vibrates, it generates electromagnetic ripples, also known as light waves. These light waves radiate in all directions away from the vibrating charge. The speed of these light waves depends not upon how fast the charge vibrates. No, that only affects the light wave's frequency. Why light travels as fast as it does is a function of the characteristics of our universe. In our common units, we find it to be 299,792.458 kilometers per second, which we conveniently round off to 300,000 kilometers per second. And even more conveniently, we represent it using the lowercase letter c, where c stands for constant. Why light always travels at this constant speed and no other speed, well, that's going to require a little attention. So listen up. You're on a platform railroad car, moving forward relative to the ground at 10 kilometers per hour. You throw a ball forward at 5 kilometers per hour. How fast is that ball moving relative to you in the train? That's right, 5 kilometers per hour. Easy. Now, how fast is the ball moving relative to the ground? You might be thinking V equals V1 plus V2. So V equals 5 plus 10 equals 15 kilometers per hour. Actually, that's not quite right. Einstein showed us the true way to add velocities together is as follows. Using this equation, you need a denominator that alters the ultimate result. So in the case of you're throwing the ball on the train, technically what you need to do is this. V equals 10 plus 5. That's the numerator, which equals 15. Now for the denominator, it's 1 plus v1 times v2, that's 5 times 10, that's 50, divided by hmm, 1 billion, 80 million kilometers per hour. That's the speed of light in units of kilometers per hour, not kilometers per second. Then you square that, 
Hmm. So what you're doing here is you're taking the number 15 and you're dividing it by a number that's slightly greater than 1. And you end up with a resultant velocity of 14.999999999999 kilometers per hour. Hmm. Close enough, right? But things begin to change when the speed becomes an appreciable fraction of the speed of light. Ride a rocket ship at half the speed of light, that would be 0.5 c. Shoot a missile ahead also at 0.5 c. How fast is that missile now moving relative to you? That's right, 0.5 c. You shot it outward at 0.5 c. It's traveling relative to you at 0.5 c. But what if you're on a planet watching this rocket ship whiz past at 0.5 c, and then it suddenly shoots out the missile also at 0.5 c? How fast is that missile from your frame of reference moving? Do the 0.5 c of the rocket plus the 0.5 c of the missile merely add together? No. You got to use the equation. So instead, you have this. 0.5c plus 0.5c divided by 1 plus, that was 0.25c squared divided by c squared, that would be c divided by 1.25 equals 0.8. 80 percent of the speed of light. Hmm. So from your perspective on the planet, you see the missile moving at 0.8c. What if instead of a missile, the passing ship fires a beam of light straight ahead? How fast do you see that beam of light moving ahead of the rocket? That would be V equals 0.5C plus C divided by 1 plus 0.5C squared divided by C squared equals 1.5C divided by 1.5. That's C. Hmm. Notice that the astronaut sees the light beam move away from the ship at C. But so does the person watching the light beam from the planet. Even though the astronaut is moving forward when he turns on the beam of light. Both people measure the speed of light to be the same, regardless of their relative motions. No matter where you are or what you're doing in this universe, the speed of light is something we all have in common. It's a universal constant, which is why we represent it using the letter C. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, you're just following the equation. <laughs> what you really want to know is why the equation? That's a great question. Really, I I'm not sure you're going to like my answer, which is that, well, that's the universe we live in. What we're talking about here is a characteristic of the universe we live in. Our goal in science is to explain how the universe works. And this is very much how it works. Engineers use this equation to make sure satellites are aligned just as we need them to be. If it weren't for this equation, satellite signals, which require a fair amount of precision, they would be unreliable. All right, if you're still scratching your head, this may help. Space and time are not solid features, remember? They can be distorted. You can think of the speed of light as the amount of space divided by the amount of time. As you watch some astronauts accelerate to super high speeds, the space they occupy notably changes. For example, what you measure to be 10 light years distant, they may measure to be only 3 light years distant. But there's also a change in the duration of the time each of you experiences. For example, what the clocks on your planet show to be 10 years, the clocks on the spaceship will show to be only 3 years. What we find is that the ratio of space to time remains the same. So the speed of light is the same. It's constant, no matter how fast you or someone else might be moving. That's the nature of the universe in which we live. Welcome to it. Of course, I'm talking about the speed of light in a vacuum, which means empty space. Through the vacuum of space, light travels unimpeded at a constant speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second, no matter what your frame of reference. See? 
Yeah, C. Please keep this in mind as we explore the basics of relativity theory in the next lessons. Good science to you. Mm -hmm.